Well, the Labor Party is facing a crucial by-election test in Melbourne and the Prime Minister is now scrambling to put forward a plan to help with cost of living before the May budget. But will it be enough for the party to retain the seat of the late and popular Peter Murphy and could it make inflation worse? We're joining me now for a cost of living crisis panel. Economists Leith Van Onselen and Warren Hogan, welcome to you both. Leith, are you worried that if there is a major cost of living package now, it could undermine the absolute priority of fighting inflation? Yeah, look, Sherry, the government's got to be really careful that it doesn't stoke inflation here. For example, if it simply hands Australians money like the federal government did over the pandemic, then that'll obviously juice demand and it could stoke inflation. Uh, however, if it restricts its cost of living uh, relief to sort of rebates and subsidies to things like energy, rents, childcare, et cetera, mm. it could actually help to lower inflation. And in fact, the most recent monthly inflation data actually showed that the rebates on energy and rents and those sorts of things actually help to lower inflation. Mm. So it all depends on how the, uh, how, how the package is structured. Mm. You know, it's interesting, Warren, that we keep hearing from Labor sources, there's a lot of reports in the media, that the Anthony Albanese government isn't committed to these Stage 3 uh, tax cuts that they promised before the election just last week on television. Um, Anthony Albanese wouldn't promise that they will flow through. I mean, they those tax cuts kick in at $45,000 there to help with bracket creep. But again, do you think that the government is preparing to come out and mount the case that they will contribute to inflation? Yeah, well, I think that's the real risk now. If you go back just six months, I think most people were were thinking the economy would be quite weak by the middle of this year and that the tax cuts could actually be helpful. But now we've still got this resilience. The economy slowed, no doubt, but it's not clear that it's slowed enough for the RBO. We'll have to watch closely. But there's no doubt that the inflation side of the, the inflationary impacts of the tax cuts will be a worry. Whether they use it as an excuse to get rid of them, I think, is, is very dangerous political grounds for two reasons. One, it'll be going against their promise or an election guarantee. But more importantly, the bracket creep is severe. Um, mm. It's having a much bigger impact on household budgets than interest rates. And, of course, this is genuine reform. It's just one part of a bigger tax package. And this is the real reform, simplifying the income tax scales. So I think they would be very unlikely to go back on it and they should be looking at other means, if any, to provide cost of living relief. I don't want to be too cynical, but, uh, Leith, it also helps them with their budget position. You know, having uh, more tax revenue, failing to address bracket creep is what's partly uh, giving the government a healthy surplus. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and in fact, the data shows that um, Australians are paying a record a share of their income in income taxes. So Australia's, like, like, like Warren said, Australia's uh, tax system is ridiculously reliant on, you know, taxes on productive effort, um, you know, namely, well, particularly personal income taxes. And it really needs to be shifted and broadened to other areas that are more efficient and also to take the, take, take the strain off, you know, productive effort. Mm. Look, the government's also now ramping up a war against the supermarket giants. Um, we're starting to see that they're looking at having the ACCC launch a price inquiry into price gouging, Woolworths, Coles being the main targets. I mean, it's not that this inquiry wouldn't be worthwhile. We all feel that we're paying far too much when we go to the supermarket. But I get the sense, Warren, that the government is looking for someone to try shift the blame onto here when the RBA Governor, Michelle Bullock, has made it clear that inflation is a homegrown problem. Yeah, I mean, my view of this is that this is just the latest political strategy to try and shift the blame for the inflation. Um, the, the, the evidence is for price gouging is very weak. In fact, prior to the pandemic, the the real issue was that the supermarkets were using their market power to squeeze suppliers, and that risked our domestic manufacturing, food manufacturing base. I did a big report on this for the Food and Grocery Council. And from what I can tell so far, the evidence for price gouging of consumers um, is pretty weak. So I think this is all about the political sort of blame game and trying to you know shift it away from basically mm. the fact that we're still running too easy a fiscal policy and uh, if we do end up having more rate hikes, that's going to be what the blame is for, for having higher interest rates. Mm. 
And Leif, I mean, the question that remains is why is inflation in Australia still so much higher than most other parts of the world? I mean, that is one set of facts that the government can't walk away from. Yeah, look, Warren might disagree with me on this one, but one of the reasons is that we're, we're running an absolutely extreme immigration policy that's, that's pumping demand. Uh, especially, and we're seeing that mostly with, with housing inflation. So, for example, our, our rents are soaring. Uh, rents are about 6% of the CPI basket. It's also filtering on to other areas, like it's pushing up demand for new homes and pushing up new home, helping to push up new home costs. Uh, housing alone, in total, takes up about a quarter of the CPI basket. So one of the reasons why Australia's got higher inflation is, is that we're running a very, very high population growth policy and, and basically demand's growing, uh, the demand side of the economy through population growth is growing faster than the supply side. Mm. All right, thank you both so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Cost of living is the most important issue this year, one of many.